work it, make it, do it, makes us. Hi, uh, so my name's Katie, and uh, I guess to give myself an introduction, I should probably uh, describe myself in some way. Probably the best thing to say is that I'm a mathematician. Uh, which uh, is to say that I did maths at school and at university, and at the end of uni I decided that was still not enough maths for me, so I carried on, uh, did a little bit of research into maths, and now essentially my job is to talk about maths. So uh, I go into schools, I do sessions at science festivals, I talk about maths on YouTube, on the radio, on the TV, basically anywhere that people will allow me to talk about maths, uh, up to and including in the street. Uh, so <laughs> uh, if you see me being enthusiastic about maths, that is completely normal. Uh, and I've come to basically share with you a project that I worked on uh, as part of the Manchester Science Festival that's just gone in uh, 2016, which I thought you might be interested in because uh, it's kind of a stupid thing that we did. Uh, and I thought it would be a bit of fun to, to kind of tell you a little bit about it. Uh, so essentially, the idea behind this was to try and give people a bit of an insight into the way that display screens work. So uh, LCD displays or anything that's like a TV screen, uh, a phone, a camera, a tablet, anything that has a screen on it uh, will display an image uh, using you know, a particular way, which hopefully some of you would probably be aware of. Uh, but in order to prove this to you, I have a microscope, uh, and I'll get my phone here, uh, and I'm hopefully going <laughs> to show you what it looks like uh, under a microscope. So I'll see if I can get this to uh, zoom in to the right level. Is this going to work? Oh, that's something's happening. There we go. So if I zoom that right in, you should hopefully be able to see the way that that image is made up. I'm just going to turn the brightness up on my screen because that's probably helpful. There we go. Now if I go in far enough, it's something like 400 times zoom. Uh, you can see that it's starting to blur into a mixture of colors. And in fact, at the right depth, you can see it's actually made up of uh, red, green, and blue segments. And in fact, the logo for the megapixel is split into red, green, and blue. Uh, that's hopefully given you an indication of why. And this is not quite working, is it? It's not my finest moment. Let's all be very proud of me. Oh, there we go, getting there. It's okay, I've got a slide, it's fine. So uh, this is what it should look like. And um, <laughs> it turns out that if you look at uh, any screen under a microscope, you basically, oh, I know what was going on. I was <laughs> turning the wrong dial. Uh, it's obviously a while since I've done this. Let's try that again. There we go. Just to prove to you that this genuinely works. Oh, there's a letter. And there's just about the red, green, and blue. The main problem with this is that I'm not physically capable of standing still enough. Uh, but you can get the idea there. And if I look at a part of the screen that's blue, uh, you can see that it does that by only lighting up the blue segments of the, of the display. And obviously, uh, you can make various different colors by combining them. So I've got some, some various screenshots. This is my phone. Uh, this is my laptop screen, which is quite nice. Uh, this is a screen that was on a really old school arcade game in a bar in London. Um, and in fact, this is used in other things as well. So um, LED lighting in, in kind of uh, venues and things will use uh, a mixture of red, green, and blue light to create different colors. Um, and it, it turns out you can actually do this. And I've got a red torch, a green torch, and a blue torch, uh, which if you combine them in different ways, I have a little Venn diagram I can shine them onto as well. Uh, but if you mix them together, you will get a different color of light in between. You can just about see yellow happening in the middle there of the red and green. And in fact, this is a, a fairly well-known thing that you can mix colors in this way and that you store images by uh, the red, green, and blue components of the image. And it's effectively just a massive spreadsheet of red, green, and blue. Uh, and in fact, I also had uh, a slightly impressive demo that I can sometimes do. I'm not going to do it today because uh, it involves a strobe effect, and I'm never sure who's in the room, but it is basically a set of uh, poi, you know, the spinning, uh, juggling things that you can spin, which flash red, green, and blue intermittently. And if you hold them up, they just look white. Uh, but in fact, if you actually spin them, you get this really nice sort of split effect. So these are all the ways that I've been using to illustrate to people that light is made up of red, green, and blue. But what we wanted to do was something to get people really hands-on with this and to get them to think about this process and why uh, why this happens and how the, the screen is actually choosing to display the image and store the image um, as a bitmap with those kind of three values for red, green, and blue. And we decided that one way we could do this is with pens. Uh, and you can see in this image, we've got basically a pixel, which is a sort of square block, uh, split into three chunks. Each of those chunks has 100 segments. And if you have a percentage red, green, and blue for each pixel, you can color in with red pen, green pen, and blue pen, and then fill in the rest with black. 
and we decided to try and do this on a massive scale. So we wanted to create an entire photograph uh, in a window using just these pixels and getting people to color them all in. Uh, so we got some support from various different organizations. Um, so it was part of Manchester Science Festival. Uh, Edding genuinely sent us 2,000 pens, which we could not have done it without them. Uh, and the University of Salford put in some funding. Um, I've literally got a massive bag of pens down here, so you're all getting free pens if you want them. Uh, and this was the window that we decided to try and do this in. So it's about 10 meters high, it's about six meters across, um, and we were hoping that we could fill this whole thing with pixels. Uh, we wanted to have a pixels of a reasonable kind of nine or 10 centimeters big. Um, if you do that, you can fit 72 by 120 pixels in this window which uh, seems like a reasonable number of pixels. Uh, it's not very many at all, it's like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we had to choose our image quite carefully. Um, and 72 by 120 is 8,640, which is the total number of pixels uh, that we would need. So it's kind of a small number, but it's also kind of a big number. Um, so for each pixel, we had basically a little uh, square of acetate, which we printed up with um, the kind of the black outline and the words red, green, and blue. And then we also printed using some kind of horrific SVG mail merge type thing, uh, some stickers which contained a QR code so we could easily identify which pixel we were looking at. Uh, the RGB values for that pixel as a percentage out of 100, the location in X and Y, a little space for someone to write their name, uh, and then a kind of uh, an ID number for that pixel. And uh, we produced, uh, you know, 8,640 of these. Uh, we colored a lot of them in. Uh, we, we use these edding pens, so they're like, uh, we, we tried to use Sharpies, because that, that was my sort of original thought, but we asked Sharpie about this, and they were like, no. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'm very grateful to Edding for actually giving us the pens. Uh, but the problem we had was that the red, green, and blue that we were using were not exactly uh, computer red, green, and blue. They were not 25500. Um, so we kind of essentially had to recalculate all of our um, RGB values in order to use these particular pens. So we looked at what color you got if you colored in some acetate with this pen and then took a photograph of that backlit uh, to see what actual color we would get if we did 100% red. Um, and it's not kind of a full computer red. And what you essentially end up with is, I've, I've kind of cut this down to two dimensions. So let's just, just think about red and blue to start with. So blue on this axis, red on that axis. Um, you can kind of think of every point in RGB space as a point here, so you've got the amount of red and the amount of blue, and if it's a 3D space, you've got the amount of green as well. Uh, and our red is sort of quite red, but not completely, so it's maybe somewhere sort of out there, it's got a dark red spot. And our blue was, again, not quite the exact blue that we were after, but it was somewhere off that. Uh, and what you essentially then end up with is a vector pointing to that point and a vector pointing to that point. This is kind of the new axes for our grid, because I can't just add an amount of red, I can only amount add an amount of that particular red. So I've got effectively a new grid, uh, and I'm saying that any point in there can be defined as uh, this many of the red pen and this many of the blue pen. Uh, and in fact, anything that's outside of that space, we can't do. Uh, you would need a negative amount of red pen <laughs> in order to color that in. Uh, you color the entire thing black, and then you color some more black that doesn't exist, I guess. Uh, and it, mm, yeah, that means that we're kind of constrained in, in what colors we can use. Uh, but we did various testing, so we had an entire testing evening at my flat, there was pizza, uh, and we put up some pixels literally on my bedroom window, uh, and we, f we managed to get this, which is reasonable. It was kind of a, a sort of rainbow effect. It was also meant to be a photograph of something, but it was really not very good. Uh, and you can kind of see the colors there. I think probably further away in the room, you'll get a slightly better effect on that. Um, but that was sort of a test to see how well it would look backlit. Uh, and we also did a test at the Museum of Science and Industry on a slightly different window, uh, which came out really well. Uh, and I was very happy about this. So that's, uh, it's a bit of a robot's face, uh, essentially, because the actual picture that we've used in the end was a big photo of a robot. Uh, and there's us looking very smug that that has just about worked. Uh, but the whole project was uh, essentially, we had to get so many people involved. We had uh, schools that were coloring in pixels for us. So we put together little packs with a, you know, a bunch of pens and some pixels and the information that they needed to color those in. And then also some activities that they could do in class, looking at the way that images are stored and, and handled and uh, you know, playing around with colored torches and so on. And uh, all the schools, we posted them out to, uh, about half of them posted them back again. Thanks, guys. Um, so uh, the rest of the pixels we had to do at the museum during the week of the Science Festival. And we essentially set up a little table in the entrance to the museum. Anyone who came in during the whole week 
we gave them a pixel and told them to color it in, give it back to us. Uh, and it was, I mean, it was a really nice way for everyone to get involved, I think, because uh, you kind of feel like you're part of something because you've done a thing and given it in, and that's now become part of a much bigger thing. But pretty much everyone who came in learned a little bit about how screens work. We had a, a camera there so they could look at their own phone screen. Um, and it was a nice sort of way to engage with people and get them involved. Um, but I mean, you want to see the finished thing, don't you? You want to see. <laughs> Uh, what happened in this, this ridiculous project. Um, so we had uh, a photograph of a robot, which was our image that we were going to do. So this was the original photo that we took. Uh, we deliberately picked this because our green pen is very dark green. It's like almost black. Uh, and it's it's a real shame because Sharpies are much brighter green, um, but Eddings are great. So we used the, uh, the fairly dark green Edding and we realized that meant we weren't going to be able to get any sort of bright yellows or greens. Uh, so we had to pick something that had probably a fair amount of dark blue and red in it, but enough variation that it would look good. We can You can get a reasonable white, but the white is quite pinkish uh, just because of how we can't get that much green into it. Um, so this was our photo that we went with and we figured it's got sort of quite a recognizable shape to it. It's got a lot of detail, but also a lot of big chunks of color, uh, which hopefully is going to work. So I think if you de-res that down to uh, 72 by 120, it's still still pretty good. Still got a reasonable amount of detail. Um, we also had a little gadget that we built that would let us preview what something would look like as pixels, um, which gave us this <laughs> image, which is quite dark. Uh, and again, this is because of the dark green, but if I zoom in, you can see that is sort of generated using random uh, layouts. And we basically anticipated that people would not necessarily put the pixels in a, in a block within the shape. They we, we basically said people are welcome to do whatever layout of, of the within the 100 squares, whichever combination of those that they wanted to do, as long as it's not a picture of a penis. Uh, we were basically <laughs> fine with pretty much anything. Uh, a few people tried to like write messages and stuff, but we did have a policy that we were going to reject anything that looked vaguely rude. And we did all right. No one actually tried anything too uh, risque with us. Um, but people did like regular patterns, and they enjoyed kind of spacing it out. And I think the groups in the schools had fun with it as well, because you could be like, OK, we've got to do 42. Oh, that's 6 times 7. Should we do so 7 blocks of 6 and things like that? So they had a, a little bit of fun with the maths as well. Um, and yeah, again, this is this is quite a big number. So the schools groups uh, sent us back some pictures of them doing it, which was really nice. We had a, uh, pictures of the kids coloring in. There was another group in America uh, that did some as well. And they sent us this nice photo of everyone uh, sitting <laughs> in front of something much more high powered at displaying images <laughs> than what we're attempting to do here, uh, making a farce of the entire thing. And uh, this is a map of basically where all of the uh, pixels came from. So we had various schools out in the US. Uh, we had a couple in Europe and a load of people in the UK. I essentially just emailed everyone I could think of that might be up for doing a thing. Uh, and we got quite a lot of uh, responses. Uh, and in fact, if I go bigger on the UK, you can see we've got quite a good spread there as well. In fact, the, the best uh, set we got sent back was from Orkney Science Festival. Uh, and literally every single pixel had the same guy's name on it because he just sat there and colored all um, I think it's 64 pixels in a block, so he coloured them all himself, uh, which is adorable. And everyone who coloured in a pixel got a sticker, uh, which uh, they managed to take home and, and, and wear, and it was, you know, it was a nice little memento for them. Um, we've also done a video about this, uh, if you're interested in uh, finding out more or hearing me explain the same things again. Uh, so this is Matt Parker, who does various maths things, and I work with him quite often. And he was kind of a pseudo consultant on this project because it was inspired by a ridiculous spreadsheet that he made uh, a little while ago. And I've done a bitly for that so that you can have a look at that video. Um, and in fact, I'm sure I did a slide for this. Oh, it's just deleted itself. Great. Um, I have got a GitHub link for the code that we used to do this because essentially uh, we had to take uh, the photograph and uh, pull out the numbers from it, which uh, this, uh, we've had a little gadget that does this for a while because Matt used it to make a spreadsheet, uh, but we pulled out the numbers from um, kind of a JPEG and produced the, the, the kind of RGB values that we would need for each pixel. Uh, we also had a full database that was done in SQL that was storing every single pixel and whether or not it's been colored yet and so on. And we also built, and I don't know why we tried to do this, but it was actually quite useful in the end, uh, a pixel checker. So we had a webcam pointed at a backlit box that I laser cut. I was very proud of it. And uh, you could put a pixel in there, and it would photograph it. And then it would compare that photograph to the entry in the database saying what colors it should be. 
um, you could, we, could, we did some form of image recognition that basically meant we could count how much red, green, and blue there was in the pixel, uh, looking at the bit that we thought was going to be coloured red, how much of that is actually red. Um, and we got a rough, it wasn't perfect, but we got a very rough thing that would tell us uh, if we put a pixel in, whether someone had done it right or not. So as people were colouring them on the day, we anticipated quality control issues. Uh, but as people were colouring them in, uh, we basically had to scan them. And then if it was completely wrong, we'd go, oh, thank you very much. That's great. And then just put it in the bin and get another one. Because um, <laughs> that's how you deal with the public. It's great. Um, so in my one remaining minute, I will show you the finished uh, megapixel. So this is the uh, photo. I'm going to fade out the photo so you can see what it's meant to look like. Uh, it's it's not amazing, I will prep you, but it, it kind of just about works. So here is uh, the finished megapixel image uh, on the window. <coughs> so I've got a red bit down there for the foot. You can just about see the dial on the front and uh, his face and stuff. Uh, in fact, the one guy in Orkney, uh, there's a bit just in the middle, like between the robot's eyes, where all of the pixels are very regular and just coloured in down the middle. That was that guy. Uh, we were kind of hoping that it would be spread across people so that they would be random, uh, but he just did it in a very regular way, which was super unhelpful. Uh, but if you would like to find out more about this project, there is a website at manchestermegapixel.com. We've got a converter there that you can produce your own numbers. We've got printable grids, so you can make tiny versions of this with 10, 10 pixels for each colour. Um, and uh, have fun with this and explore. And I'll put the link to the GitHub on there as well, so you can have a look at the code if you want.